First, though, we'll look at your news this morning. A judge is expected to rule later today on the city's application to evict campers from Vancouver's Oppenheimer Park. Greg Harper joins us live from BC Supreme Court this morning with the details. Greg. Good morning, Kyle. This has been an ongoing issue, and on Monday, a B.C. Supreme Court judge began hearing arguments uh, from both sides. Uh, the city says that uh, conditions have increasingly gotten worse uh, inside Oppenheimer Park, that it has become unsafe, and the tents need to come down. Uh, but uh, some of the lawyers representing some of the homeless inside the park, they argue that adequate housing needs to be found before the homeless are forced to leave. According to the city, there are about 100 homeless in the park right now, but others say that number number is closer to 400. The camp at Oppenheimer Park has been up for nearly three months now. We're not here to argue that people should be living in a park indefinitely. Uh, that's not what anybody wants. We're here to argue that if those things are coming online shortly, we need to keep people safe and secure until they actually have access to those meaningful options. So a decision that may come early this afternoon. Uh, the city wants the park cleared by next Tuesday. Kyle? We'll see what happens in court today. Greg Harper joining us live from downtown Vancouver this morning. Greg, thanks for that. A coroner's jury wants to see the Canada Border Services Agency make big changes in the way it detains people. The jury issued non-binding recommendations after the inquest into the death of Lucia Jimenez. The Mexican woman hanged herself at Vancouver International Airport while awaiting deportation. Jurors want the CBSA to create a dedicated holding center for immigration detainees with suicide proofing measures and better better access for lawyers and family members. The jury wants it staffed by border agents only, not private security guards. One thing we really want to see is that these are not file, that these are not put in the drawer of a bureaucrat because they're only recommendations. I think they have to stand up for what they have to do and their duties. They've been treated by, as ordinary criminals housed as criminals, dressed as criminals, shackled as criminals, guarded as criminals, and now the jury has said that it's, they have to stop treating them as criminals. They are immigration detainees. The CBSA read a statement after the inquest but did not take any questions from the media. It says it will review the jury's recommendations. A Vancouver woman has been sentenced to five years in prison for killing her two newborn babies. The judge called Sarah Leung's actions horrific, sad, and incomprehensible. Leung was convicted of infanticide earlier this year for killing one son in April of 2009 and the other a year later. The trial heard she secretly disposed of the babies because she was afraid of her parents' reaction. One of the principal concerns here is rehabilitation and hopefully she'll get some help understanding herself, understanding how she deals with life and pregnancy. Leung's sentence also requires her to report any time she becomes pregnant over the next 20 years. Her lawyer says the Crown is appealing her acquittal on two counts of second degree murder. Well, the White House says it is grateful the federal conservatives have pushed a motion through to send Canadian fighter jets to Iraq. The praise from Washington came last night shortly after the House of Commons voted to authorize airstrikes. But MPs also specified the aerial offensive will be limited to Iraq. No ground troops will be sent to battle. A tiny U.S. company that holds the license for a Canadian-made Ebola vaccine says it is working as fast as it can to get that option tested and ready for use. New Link Genetics says at least five clinical trials involving the vaccine will soon be underway. Canada, the U.S., Germany, Switzerland, and an unnamed African country, which is not battling Ebola, are all on board to take part. A total lunar eclipse turned the moon a burnt reddish-orange color early this morning. Fog may have prevented you from seeing the blood moon in parts of the Lower Mainland, though. Today's total eclipse is the second in a sequence of four. Your next chance to see it will be in April of next year.